A picture is worth a thousand words, but a word is worth 32 bits in C++. How conveniently you can work with strings in a programming language greatly impacts your productivity. Fortunately, modern JavaScript strings are pretty damn awesome, and by the end of this lesson, you will know all there is to know about strings at least at the level of a professional JavaScript developer. So let's go. As we saw in our lesson on JavaScript primitives, we can create strings using single quotes or double quotes, and it's mostly a matter of preference, but for me personally, I prefer single quotes as I don't have to press the shift key. Additionally, we also saw that we can use the escape character backslash to embed a single quote within a single quoted string or a double quote within a double quoted string. Now, because JavaScript uses the backslash character as an escape character, if we want to use backslash by itself, we have to escape it with another backslash as you can see over here. Now, there are plenty of other escape sequences within JavaScript as well. Among the popular ones is the Unicode escape sequence where we use backslash u followed by a Unicode quote point within curly brackets. There are a few relating to white space as well, for example, backslash t for the tab character and backslash n for the new line character. Let's take a deeper look by first discussing some core behaviors of the JavaScript string data type. We create a simple variable called person that contains a very simple string. And of course, if you log it out right now, you will see this string. The string data type provides a number of useful methods. For example, there is to uppercase, which can be used to convert the string to uppercase. And similarly, there is to lowercase, which converts the characters to their lowercase values. A fact worth knowing about JavaScript strings is that they are immutable, which means that calling functions on them might return a new string but it doesn't change the original value of the variable. For example, if you log out person, it is still going to be that original string. We can actually access the individual characters of a string by using an index within square brackets. And this is zero based like all good programming languages. And of course, if you go out of bounds, JavaScript returns that type that we've talked about before, which is undefined, which basically means uninitialized. One additional thing worth pointing out is that JavaScript doesn't have a separate character type even individual characters are still a string. And speaking of types, there is a special operator within JavaScript called typeof, which returns the type of its operand. For example, if you apply it to a variable of type string, it returns the literal string string. Strings also have a length property, which returns the number of UTF-16 characters of a string. And our example, Mr. John Doe has 11 characters, including the spaces. Talking of Unicode, you can pretty much put any Unicode characters within the string that you want. As an example, emojis are perfectly fine. Modern JavaScript has a feature called template literals, which makes multi-line strings and string concatenation much easier than it used to be. The way you define a template literal within JavaScript is by using the backtick character, which you can see on screen right now. And when you are using backticks to create simple strings, it's also conventional to call these as template strings. Now, of course, because these are delimited by backticks, we can actually use single quotes and double quotes inside of them without the need to escape them with the backslash. But as you would expect, if you wanted to use a backtick inside of a backtick, you have to escape it with the backslash as we are doing in this final example. Now, let's say we want to create a string that contains two lines, a line one and a line two. Traditionally, we would have to insert the new line ourselves with the backslash n, and then to make sure that we can continue on to the next line, we use a backslash at the end of the line. This basically means that the same string is continuing on to the next line of code. Template strings, on the other hand, are multi-line by default. So we can just write the code that we would write, which is line one, press the enter key, line two. And now we have a string containing two lines, line one and line two, as we can see in the output. The other great thing about template strings is how they greatly simplify concatenation, which is in layman terms, combining two strings to give a bigger string. Traditionally, if you wanted to combine title and person with the space in between, we could do this with a plus operator. But with template strings, we can actually use this feature called interpolation, where we can use dollar signs followed by curly braces to jump out of our string context into the surrounding JavaScript environment and bring in expressions like the title and the person so that we have a much neater way of saying title space person. Now, string interpolation will automatically convert any of the past in variables into their string equivalents. For example, if we have an item count, which is of type number, we could use the plus operator to add it to a string to get a bigger string. And the same works when we use interpolation in a template literal as well. The number 11 gets converted to a string and becomes a part of the output string. 
Now, of course, whenever we have special characters, the question that you should have is what happens if you want those characters as a part of the string? For example, if you wanted to use dollar curly bracket start, well, the answer is quite simple. You just put a backslash before it. And now the dollar curly bracket no longer acts like a string interpolation. Modern JavaScript strings are full of useful methods. So let's focus in and look at the ones that we are most likely to use in real world code. Kicking us off is the trim functionality, which can be used to remove white spaces from the starts and the ends of a string. So here we have a string that starts with the tab, has a few spaces, then hello world, and then on the end, some spaces and a new line. The trim method will get rid of all of the white spaces from the edges of the string. So we are left with just plain old hello world. We can also use trim start to just remove the starting white space and alternatively use trim end to just get rid of the trailing white space. And of course, if you run this code, you can see that the results match our expectation. Now, if you want to be more specific about the things that you want to replace, JavaScript also has a replace functionality in the form of the replace method. However, unlike what you might expect, it actually only replaces the first instance of the found value. So the first dog has been replaced with a hound, but the second dog has been left intact. Fortunately, modern JavaScript has another method called replace all, which does replace all instances of the found value. So all instances of dog have been replaced by hound when we use replace all. A thing that often comes up in UI programming is the desire to create repetitions of the same string. For example, we can repeat the character X three times to get triple X, or for a more real world example, we can combine one with a hundred zeros to get a Google and repeat also works with bigger character sequences. For example, we can do echo, 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 echo. Now let's talk a bit about search. Modern JavaScript has this lovely method called includes, which searches for a substring within a larger string. For example, we can check if this sentence includes the string fox, which of course it does. We can also use the method starts with to check if a string starts with another string, which this particular string does start with the. And similarly, there is a method called ends with, which we can use to check if a string ends with a particular value. For example, this string does end with a dog. Now, all of these methods are case sensitive, which is a good thing because if you are looking for a big dog, we really don't want to get a small puppy by mistake. If you want to go more low level with your searches, we can do an index based search as well. For example, here we have a message, brave, brave new world. And if you look for the index of brave, it is at index zero. And we can also look for the last index of brave, which of course in this particular case is at index seven. Now, if the string that we are searching for is not found, these methods will return minus one. And just like the other search methods that we saw, these are also case sensitive. Now let's talk a bit about formatting our strings. We have a simple string called heartbreak and a second string called hotel. And right now, if we log out first and second, we get them aligned left. But what if you want to align them to the right by adding some more spaces before the hotel? The concept of adding some space is called padding. And no surprise, there is a method called pad start, which takes a desired length and then automatically adds the correct number of spaces to make the string match that length. So here we are padding the start of the second string to make it match the length of the first string. Now we might want to pad the end of a string. For example, we might want to add these spaces before showing this hotel icon. And we can do that with a similarly named pad end function. Another thing that you might want to do is some slicing and dicing of strings. And JavaScript strings have this lovely method called substring, which you can utilize for most use cases. You can pass in a single argument for the starting index. For example, here we are saying that give us everything after the length of hello. And we can actually even pass in two arguments, one for the starting index to start from and one for the ending index that we want to exclude. And here we are saying that give us everything starting from zero, but before the index of a world. As you hopefully noticed, there is a lot of power built into JavaScript strings, and that is to be expected from a programming language that was originally designed to work with user interfaces. As always, Thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next one.